Hello? Excuse me! I heard that you guys just came into a $3.7 million inheritance. Is it really true? Sorry, but who is this? Oh! I said you guys, but I was just referring to Robert. He's the one that was named for the inheritance, right? But man! I can't believe Robert's parents had so much money saved up. They just look like an average working class family. I'm still in shock. <laughs> what did they do? Win the lottery? Some kind of crypto jackpot? Dang. Now I really regret getting divorced. If I knew his parents were that loaded, I would have latched home more aggressively. I should have popped out a kid. Then I'd have a definite piece of the fortune. Um, sorry, but you still haven't answered my question from earlier. Who is this? Oh, my bad. I haven't introduced myself yet. I'm Robert's ex-wife. My name's Sara. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you're Jessica, right? You and Robert got married around 10 years ago, right? Oh, Sara. Sorry, but how did you get my number? That's correct. We did get married 10 years ago. How did you know that? And more importantly, how did you even find out about the inheritance? <laughs> well, there's nothing I'm not aware of, you know. Nothing ever gets past me. I've got eyes and ears everywhere. I'm shocked Robert got married again, though. Less than a year after our divorce, too. He even told me I was the only one for him. He told me he would love me and only me forever. I guess in the end, his love and promises didn't mean anything. <laughs> Hopefully he stayed true to his words for you. <laughs> wow. For someone who betrayed his trust, you sure talk a lot. You were the one who broke his trust and all the love he had towards you. What? How dare you talk to me like that? You're not the only one who knows things. I've also heard about you from Robert. One day, you just disappeared all of a sudden, right? If I remember correctly, you ran away with your lover, right? You didn't even bother talking with Robert or even send a text. Even a text would have been better than just mailing the divorce papers to him. Oh my. I guess you already know everything about me, hmm? Well, I guess that makes things easier for me. Now we can quit beating around the bush and get right to the main point. To be straight with you, I messaged you for a reason. Not just a dilly-dally and chat. Can you give Robert a message from me? Tell him to give me some of the inheritance money. What? Are you saying you want him to split his inheritance with you? Yep, that's right. After all, as his ex-wife, I have a right to it too. <laughs> I guess marrying him back then was a good choice. I'm sorry? I texted Robert so many times and even called him, but he never responded to anything. He's been ignoring me all this time. Maybe he's still mad at me because of the divorce? Or maybe he misses me so much that he's flustered and doesn't know how to reply. <laughs> well, anyway, he wouldn't reply to me, so I had to get your number and text you instead. So I can leave the message with you, right? I trust you'll let him know. Please wait a minute. I need to clear up a few things with you first. Why would you have a right to the inheritance? You got divorced over 10 years ago, and it was legal and processed properly. What do you mean? Of course I'm entitled to it. Because when we were married, I lived with Robert's parents. So? My, my. You have no idea how difficult it was for me back then, living with Robert and his parents. As his wife, I was forced to do all of the chores. Everything. I had to do all of the cooking and cleaning. And on top of that, any time there was a random errand, it would be my responsibility too. That's why it's more than fair to say that I took great care of Robert's parents. Since I worked so hard back then, I definitely deserve a reward or compensation from that big lump of inheritance money. Sorry, you mean like a compensation from his parents? Of course! I was their primary caretaker, after all. 
And I heard that if the wife was the caretaker, she'd have rights to the inheritance too. I mean, you and I are similar, aren't we? Both wives that cared for Robert's parents and did all the household chores. So at the very least, I should get like $75,000. Doesn't that sound fair? <laughs> are you serious? You want $75,000. That's because living together was so tough for me. I need compensation. Who knows? I might even have PTSD and need even more money in the future for a therapist. You, as his current wife, should understand what I mean, right? That's obviously a very fair amount of money based on everything we're expected to do. Sorry, but I don't agree at all. I actually enjoy spending time with Robert and his parents. So please stop saying ridiculous things. I also heard all about that time from Robert, and it sounds more like you deserved it all, since you were the one that put yourself and Robert into that situation. You were the one that took all of the money for the down payment for the new house and spent it all. And you didn't even discuss it with Robert. So to save up enough money for another down payment, you guys moved in with Robert's parents, right? Well, Robert really did tell you everything, huh? Robert actually asked you to go find a job the whole time too, right? He even said it's fine if you don't do any of the tours. Just please get a part-time job or something to help with the savings. But you just ignored him every time. Uh, well, you see, I have my own reasons. And you went on to say things like, I just want to stay home and do the easy chores. Even though you were the one that used up all of the down payment, you made zero effort to build up the funds for a second down payment. And for the cherry on top, you talked about how tired you were of living with your in-laws and then proceeded to run off with your lover, right? So please tell me, what did you do that makes you think you deserve part of the inheritance? Shut up! My god, you're so annoying! Don't get all high and mighty on me. Just because you're Robert's wife, the only reason you're together is because I left him. All you did was take my leftovers. How dare you speak so arrogantly to me when you wouldn't have this position without me? Come again? So you should just shut up and give Robert my message. Like I told you in the beginning. Stop getting in the way with your little tricks just because you don't want me to come in and snatch up your share of the money. I never said I wanted anything. Nor do I have any intentions of doing that. Then just do as I say. Make sure you give Robert my message. You better remember to do it. Robert, are you busy right now? I have something I want to discuss with you. I really don't want to say this, but I have a message for you. From your ex-wife, Sarah. What? Are you sure it was from Sara? 200% sure. She was messaging me like an hour ago. She said you never replied to any of her texts or calls, so she told me to give you a message. Oh, is it about the inheritance? And how she wants me to split it with her? Yep, she demanded you give her $75,000. She said that it's because she took care of your parents for several years while living together. Uh... I thought that if I just ignored her, she'd give up. I can't believe she reached out to you. I'm sorry for dragging you into this mess. No, no, don't worry about it. But wow, I guess she really wants that money if she's willing to go so far. Did she really devote herself to your parents and work herself to the bone like a slave? She made it sound like she was the caretaker for mom and dad for years and years. Wow, did she really say that? spouting nonsense about devotion and self-sacrifice. She didn't want to work at all, so I left the household chores to her. But my gosh, it was horrible. Every single day was a nightmare. The majority of the time, like at least six days a week, she just bought frozen microwavable meals or takeout and fast food like KFC. She did all this despite the doctor saying that we need to watch and control mom and dad's sodium intake. Can you imagine? Every day we ate junk like fried chicken and burgers, and her idea of healthy was fries, because they're a vegetable. And to top it off, she barely cleaned, the floor was always sticky, there was dust everywhere. All she did was make things worse. I guess since she wasn't properly doing the chores, 
She had a lot of time to go fool around with her lover. Wow. She's quite something. Asking for $75,000 after doing all that. Well, for now, I did pass on her message. I feel if we keep ignoring her, nothing good will come out of it. She doesn't seem like the type to give up easily. Maybe it would be better if you firmly refused her? Nah, it would be a waste of time. That's why we should just ignore her from now on. But based on what she said, I feel like Sara doesn't know anything about what happened. That's why I think it would be better to meet up with her so you can explain everything about the inheritance. I guess ignoring her is one way to solve this, but I feel it would be more of a hassle in the future. She might even find out where we live and come ask in person. Yeah, you're right. But man, I really don't want to see her. I can't imagine her listening to what I have to say or even giving me time to talk without ranting and demanding money from me. <laughs> Let's try our best. You got this. It's not like you have to convince her of anything. All you have to do is explain the situation to Sara. Besides, we really don't have any other choice. I guess we could both change our numbers. But based on how persistent she is, I bet she'll just find out and spam us again. Like how she found my number and texted me this time. No, I can't have that. You don't know Sara. She doesn't know you. So it's unfair to drag you into this mess. Okay, I've decided. Since it's gotten to this point, I guess I have to man up. I really, really don't want to, but I'll ask her out and tell her everything. Fingers crossed it'll go smoothly. Hello! Is this Jessica? I have something very important to tell you. <laughs> I'm so sorry, dear, but both Robert and the 3.7 million are mine now. <laughs> Excuse me? But this is all thanks to you. It's all because you gave my message to him. Thank you for setting us up. You're like our little Cupid. <laughs> sorry, but I really don't follow. I have no idea what you're talking about all of a sudden. Oh, dear. Well, if you must know... <laughs> to tell you the truth, Robert actually reached out to me a few hours ago. I thought it was just going to be a short notice or something telling me that he already sent my share of the inheritance to my account. But you see, he said he actually really wants to meet up with me in person. He said he has something super important to discuss with me. <laughs> okay. And? Since we're meeting anyways... We decided to make it a date and get dinner together. <laughs> he definitely wants to get back together with me. I'm sure of it. I bet he's going to propose to me and tell me to marry him again now that he has 3.7 million in his name. Well, I'm so excited. Um, you're totally off the mark. I wish you'd wake up and stop having these crazy delusions based off a few text messages. Wow. Well, Excuse you. You tell me, how am I being delusional? I'm just outlining what's going to happen once we meet up. After all, I'm way more glamorous and beautiful than you. And I just give off the aura of a high-class beauty. So it's only natural for him to want to get back together with me. We have way more history, too. Did you know we were high school sweethearts? Nothing can beat that. Just need a little heat to start the old flame. Wow. And just so you know, Robert was quite cheeky with me. <laughs> Even though he's ignored all my calls and texts all this time, I guess it must have added to his excitement. After I sent him a spicy, super sexy selfie, he totally took the bait and replied in seconds. Guess I still got a hold on him after all these years. <laughs> like I said... The power of young love. <laughs> and guess what he replied with? There's something I want to talk to you about. Can we meet at a calm, quiet place to talk? I'm speechless. Do you normally send selfies to other people's husbands? I mean, he's going to go back to being my husband soon. So it doesn't really matter, does it? <laughs> oh my! I'm so excited for dinner tonight. I should probably wear a gorgeous dress in preparation, right? 
I have to look my best for the proposal. Uh, but if things get heated, we might end up spending the night together. Oh my, I'm getting all excited now! Ooh, la. I must also prepare a special lingerie set just in case. And maybe see if I can sneak into a waxing appointment. That's enough. You're acting completely out of line. I can assure you that Robert has no ulterior motives. He's just meeting to talk with you. It's okay. I totally understand your feelings right now. But Robert is still totally in love with me. That's why he wants to meet up now after all this time that he spent ignoring me. <laughs> Don't say I didn't warn you. You're gonna get tossed aside in a few hours. So if I were you, I'd be preparing the divorce papers. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> While you do that, I'll go print the marriage application form. Good thing the restaurant is so close to the courtroom. We could submit the forms right after dinner. <laughs> Since we're finally getting back together, I have to put my name in the family registry. With this, both Robert and the inheritance are mine! <laughs> um... You do know that Robert's parents are still alive, right? What? I can't take it anymore, so I'm going to lay it all out for you. I can't let Robert meet up with you when you're in this crazy, disillusioned state. So please listen carefully, because I'm going to explain everything to you right now. First off, you're wrong about everything. All those assumptions you made. What do you mean, wrong? And what kind of nonsense is this about Robert's parents still being alive? If they're still here, then how did he inherit 3.7 million? If his parents didn't pass away, then how did he get the inheritance? It's not possible. He never told me about rich uncles or distant relatives. The fact is, Robert did inherit 3.7 million. But no one said that it's from his parents. You were the one that just assumed it was. What are you trying to say? I mean, it's an inheritance, so obviously it's from his parents? Is there anyone that would just give a stranger 3.7 million after they die? Other than his parents, who else would write Robert into their will? Your parents did. What? Your parents, as in mine? My mom and dad? Yes, that's right. Your parents are the ones that left a 3.7 million inheritance to Robert. They said to think of it as an apology for all the troubles that their immature daughter caused. And that even if they aren't related by blood, and no longer connected through your marriage, they still see Robert as their own son. That's why they wrote him into their will and left Robert all that money. What the heck? There is no way in hell. Stop making things up and spitting out nonsense. I'm only telling you the truth. What part of anything that you said is the truth? My family is just your average everyday middle class family. There's no way my parents would have 3.7 million in cash or assets. Even if they sold everything they owned. Heck, even if we included my assets, it would barely hit 1 million. And also, how dare you? My parents aren't dead. And in the first place, why the heck would they give everything to my ex-husband and not to me? Even if they gave some to him as a parting gift or compensation after our divorce, the amount of money doesn't make any sense. Well, you might have thought that you were from an average middle-class family. But in reality, your parents were actually very smart with their asset management and saved money diligently, you know? And I really am sorry, but I wasn't lying. Unfortunately, your parents really did pass away. Huh? You're saying... My parents are dead? Wow, I guess you really didn't know anything. That's why Robert was going to meet up with you. To explain everything in person. Well, I guess it's more like I convinced him to meet with you and talk it out. And you must have sent that selfie to him right before he sent the message asking you to meet. That's why I told you that he doesn't even have the slightest intention of getting back together with you. Hold on a sec. I can't make any sense of what you just said. Or maybe it's that I can't wrap my head around it? Everything you said makes sense as a single fact, but together... I just can't seem to process it? Can you start by explaining my parents' death? I still can't believe you. How could you utter something so ridiculous? I have to go, so you can get the details from Robert later. 
since I've told you this much already, I trust you'll be able to listen to the rest of what Robert has to say calmly. Well then, I'll be off now. Thank you so much, Jess. Thanks to you, everything went smoothly with Sara. She was calm and mature and listened to everything I had to say. It's all because you told Sara what happened before I met up with her. That's great to hear. Thank God. I was worried about you. But how is Sara holding up? Hmm. After I told her everything, she looked kind of glum. Or maybe it was more like she just tensed up due to the shock, so I couldn't really read her emotions. But I guess it's only a natural reaction. Since she had no clue about her parents, and all of a sudden we just dropped the truth on her. That's true. It must be hard to accept everything all at once. Well, it might be a bit harsh of me to say this, but this is a case of you reap what you sow. When her dad got in the accident, she never picked up, no matter how many times they called, even up to his death. And when her mom was sick and got admitted to the hospital, she never picked up her phone either. True. Even though both her relatives and the hospital called so many times, if she answered even one of those calls, things would not have come to this. About that, Sarah told me there was a reason behind why she didn't pick up. I mean, it's ridiculous, but... She said that's why it's not her fault that she ignored all the calls, and no one can blame her for it. She took it all out on me. Oh my. What happened? Do you remember how Sara and I got divorced because she basically eloped with her lover? Well, at that time, she borrowed money from her parents to fund their trip and escape. But she couldn't tell them that, so she lied and said that we just couldn't save enough for the down payment and begged them to lend us money. They ended up lending her around $40,000. Oh, wow. Really? Apparently, she begged them, crying and complaining about how tough it was to live with my parents. And they gave in and gave her the $40,000. But, well, with the divorce and all, her lie was exposed. And that's why she didn't pick up any of the calls because she thought they were calling to chase after her for that $40,000 loan. I see. I guess it makes sense why she didn't pick up even though everyone spammed her with calls. Yeah. Even though in reality, it was a call for her to see her parents one last time. If only she picked up, then she could have talked with them and spent those last few moments together. That's so sad. I remember you saying that Sahara's mom really wanted to see her one last time before the end. From the time we first started dating, her parents were always kind to me. Even more so after we got married. They always treated me like family. That's why I went to go see her at the hospital when she was admitted. Even if Sara and I didn't work out, her parents were never in the wrong. And Sara was an only child, so I ended up helping when her mom was sick at home too. I just couldn't leave her knowing that she had no other children to visit and care for her. But I still can't believe that she wrote me into the will because of that. And on top of that, they left everything to me. Oh, wow. I still vividly remember that day. The attorney knocked on our door and started to talk about wills and inheritance out of the blue. When he brought up the amount, I almost lost my balance and fell over from shock. I mean, 3.7 million? Sara's mom really did leave an unbelievable will. It almost felt like something out of a movie. If only Sara had stayed in contact with her parents then properly apologized for everything up to this point. I think they would have accepted her apology and forgiven her. I'm sure they would have preferred to have their own daughter caring for them in their final years. That way, she would have inherited everything. I guess it's like you said earlier, you reap what you sow. Sara is the one who put herself in this situation. But I really wonder if this is enough to make her give up. I mean, she doesn't really have any other choice, right? After all, this is the result of her actions and no one else is responsible. And most importantly, this was all in Sara's mom's will. You did good, Robert. It's been a long, long day. I'll run the bath for you, so hurry up and come home. And if you're up for it, I'll make your favorite mac and cheese, too. I bet you didn't eat much at dinner with Sara. Hey! You two better return my inheritance! All of that 3.7 million is my money. My inheritance. Money left by my parents. 
It doesn't make any sense that they'd skip over their own daughter and give it to the ex-husband. Robert already explained everything to you, didn't he? You didn't inherit anything because of your own doings. You don't have anyone to blame but yourself. Shut up! Who are you to lecture me? I'm going to come take it from you right now. Mark my words. I'm going to make you return all 3.7 million of my money. Come again? There's no way I could have known that my parents would leave behind so much. Like I said, we're just an average working class family. It's not like we're Taylor Swift or Trump's family. And I mean, an accident and getting sick? There's no way I could have predicted that. Just because I didn't pick up, they passed over me and gave it all to you two? There's obviously no way I can accept that. Um, if you have so many complaints, I think it would be better to take it to your parents at the cemetery. After all, they're the ones that have the final say. Shut up! It doesn't matter, so just shut up and get ready to give me back my money. I'm going to bring over the best lawyer in this field with me. I'm going to get what's mine without fail. I guess it can't be helped then. If that's how you want to play this, then we'll get ready as well. Actually, it would be even better if you came to us. The timing would be perfect, since you can also give us back the $40,000. What? $40,000? What are you going on about all of a sudden? The $40,000 that you borrowed from your parents, of course. You know, the money that you took and lied about. The money you used to run away with. I mean, I remember it, but what does that have to do with you? Why in the world would I have to pay it back to you? I borrowed it from my parents and they're already gone. So why should you get it? Just because they passed away doesn't mean you don't have to return it, you know. Huh? You see, when your parents passed away, everything that was theirs was passed to Robert. And that includes the $3.7 million and the $40,000 that is owed to them. Robert inherited all of that. Do you see where I'm going with this? In other words, you have to pay us $40,000. You have to return your loan. What the heck? You weren't aware? Even if the person that lent you money passes away, your responsibility to pay it back doesn't just magically disappear. Money owed is also part of inheritance, you know. Anyway, you said you're going to bring over a lawyer that specializes in inheritance and wills, right? In that case, the lawyer can explain it all to you in greater detail. Thanks, Ara for coming all the way to pay back the loan and even bringing a lawyer to witness everything. It really helps Robert and I. Now we don't have to come to you. Hold your horses! I didn't know anything about money owed being inheritable. And in the first place, how am I gonna return $40,000? It's impossible. I see. If it's impossible, then you don't have to return the money, right? Well, in that case, it's impossible for us to return the 3.7 million as well. What? Well then, see you. Uh, just to remind you, just in case you have any more complaints, remember to get the $40,000 you owe us first. Afterwards, Sara never contacted either me or Robert ever again. I told Robert everything just in case. It's not like it's money that I lent out, so I don't really care if she returns it or not. Actually, if it means that she'll leave us alone, I'd rather she never return it. <laughs> That's all he said, so I guess the $40,000 won't be a problem ever again. As for what happened to Sara after, according to rumors, she married someone with $3.7 in assets, but was also borrowing money from every other loan shark. I don't know if this was before or after the rich husband. But apparently, she was on the run now because of that, going from state to state to escape death. I heard that she borrowed money from some pretty scary loan offices, too, and they wouldn't hesitate to hurt women if it got them money. Oh, well, all the best to her. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe to see new content. You can also check out our channel for many more videos like this.